This is the Toyota Yaris Cross Hybrid. In this video, we'll do a full walk around. We'll talk about the differences between this and the V variant. And I also got to drive this briefly, so we'll talk about our initial driving impressions. So, is it worth your money? Let's find out. Okay, so on the outside, there are very few differences between the hybrid and the V variant. Uh, here at the front, they look exactly the same. Unlike most Toyota hybrids, you don't get any blue accents here on the outside. So like the V variant, this gets LED headlamps, the exact same LED headlamps. We get front parking sensors. We get a front camera because this comes with a, a 360 camera system. And you also get a front radar somewhere over there for your ADAS. Um, this gets the exact same wheels as the V variant. These are 18s wrapped in 235, 55 series Bridgestone tires. It gets disc brakes on all four corners. You get LED fog lamps down here. And like the V variant, you get this faux skid plate finished in silver. So the hybrid gets a two-tone color scheme. The roof is finished in gloss black. Now you can also get the V variant in a two-tone color scheme, but you have to pay extra for it. Okay, so here at the back, it looks almost the same as the V variant, except that you get an HEV badge over there. It gets the same LED tail lamps. You get the same silver faux skid plate down here. And of course, this gets a power lift kit. The cargo space is the same as the other variants. The battery is quite small and it's underneath the front passenger seat, so it has no effect on cargo space. Now, I don't have the exact volume, but space is quite decent. There's a lot of room between the wheel wells. You get a removable to no cover, and the second row seats fold flat to the floor. So for those who don't know, hybrids have two power plants. In this case, we have a 1.5 liter four-cylinder naturally aspirated engine and an electric motor. Um, the combined output is 109 horsepower and 121 newton meters of torque, which curiously is lower than the output of the, of the V variant. And I'm not sure why that is. So like most Toyota hybrids, this has a nickel metal hydride battery, which is somewhere underneath the seats. Now, you don't have to charge the battery, for those who don't know. The battery is charged by kinetic energy when you're braking. And also when the engine is running, it's basically acting as a generator. So it's also charging the batteries. Everything is connected to a CVT transmission, which drives the front wheels. This is exclusively a front wheel drive vehicle. Okay, so we're now inside the Toyota Yaris Cross Hybrid. And from this vantage point, it looks almost exactly the same as the V variant. Except that you get a few more extra buttons here. Like you get this EV mode button over here, obviously for switching to EV mode. Now the battery capacity of the Yaris Cross Hybrid is not that high, so don't expect to cruise long distances in pure EV mode. You could probably do three to four kilometers before it switches back to, to gasoline power. And also, I believe this can't go over 40 kph in EV mode. Um, if you go over 40 kph, the engine will automatically turn on. So the dashboard is exactly the same as the V variant, like this. It's also leather wrapped, like the V variant. You also get blue stitching on it. Uh, the top of the dashboard is hard plastic. This right here is soft touch. And you also get leather wrapped armrests over here and also over here. You get these aluminum accents over here. Uh, and this is standard in all variants of the Yaris Cross. And you also get a sprinkling of piano black accents. Uh, it's definitely one of the better looking Toyota interiors that I've seen under 2 million pesos. 
And one major difference between this and the V variant is that this comes with a panoramic sunroof. As you can see, it extends from here all the way to the back. But one thing to note is that you can't open the glass. It's fixed in place. Although you do have a cover like that. All variants of the Yaris Cross get the same 10-inch um, screen, which I think is a huge improvement for a Toyota. You now, previous Toyotas came with those aftermarket-looking infotainment screens. This one looks a lot more modern. You don't have that hump at the back, and the bezel is also quite thin, so it looks like a modern screen. Although I would say it's still not as nice-looking as some of its Chinese competitors. Okay, so let's start the car. Okay, so I just started the car and there was no starter noise and the engine is also still off. So the car is basically on right now and if I put it in drive, it will automatically move forward. But it doesn't seem like it's on because there is no engine noise, there is no starter noise. It's as if the car is still turned off. Okay, so like the V variant, this also gets a 360 camera and the resolution is better than the one that you find on the Corolla Cross. You also get active guidelines. Um, you don't get a 3D view though, like you can't rotate the screen like on some of its competitors. Um, so you don't get a tachometer, instead you get this power gauge. So it tells you if the, if the battery is charging or if you're using power. So this comes with Toyota's full suite of active safety features. It gets adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, autonomous emergency braking, which you also get on the V variant. But this one gets blind spot warning, which you don't get on the V variant. You get a wireless phone charger down here. Now, unlike the V variant, you don't get paddle shifters here. You get an electronic parking brake without a hold. You get two cup holders here, which are quite deep. If you have smaller cups, you also have these shallower retractable cup holders. You don't get a lot of space underneath the armrest, but you do get one 12 volt out over there. You get one USB-A port over here and one USB-C port. Okay, let's check out the back seat. Ah, oh, yes. But here at the back seat, you also get two air vents and two USB ports down here. So they're both USB-C ports. You also got the center armrest with two cup holders. Space is decent. Um, I have about uh, four and a half inches of legroom. And definitely this panoramic sunroof helps improve the ambiance inside the cabin. If you're new to driving hybrids, starting the Yaris Cross is the first thing that you'll have to get used to as a lot of times the engine won't turn on right away so if you're not used to it you'd think that the car is still off but once you get used to it it feels like driving a regular car steering is not heavy but it has a bit more weight than you would expect nvh levels are quite good especially when the engine is off now this is not like the nissan kicks at all when it comes to power delivery um there is a bit of kick initially when you floor it but it very quickly fizzles out. It's a weird feeling as the initial torque makes you expect more power, but then it just leaves you hanging. If you're expecting this to be quick because of the electric motor, don't. You'd just be disappointed. But it should be very fuel efficient and very quiet. On the screen, you have this display which shows the flow of power. Like when you get these yellow arrows, the battery is being charged by regenerative braking. If you see these green arrows, the car is running on electric power. And if the red arrows show up, that means that the engine is also powering the wheels and also charging the battery. Also, one thing to note is that the battery of the Yaris Cross is very small. It's even smaller than the battery of the Corolla Cross Hybrid. It's not like a PHEV that can go for 80 to 90 kilometers on pure EV alone. You'd be lucky if you can do 3 kilometers on pure EV before the engine turns on again on the Yaris Cross. Also, above a certain speed, I believe 40 kph, the engine automatically turns on regardless of how much battery power you have left.
The most common question that people ask about hybrids is how much the battery is going to cost when it needs to be replaced. Now, I got an answer to that question from a Toyota agent, but it's not from TMP, so I can't vouch for its accuracy. But expect it to be in the six digit figures. The battery, though, has a warranty of eight years, and hybrid batteries tend to last a long time. Some Prius owners report that their batteries last for over 200,000 miles or about 10 to 15 years. So it's not something that you should worry about in the short term or medium term. If you intend to keep the car for more than a decade, then maybe. The Toyota Yaris Cross sells for 1,598,000 pesos. That's 292,000 pesos more expensive than the V variant. And for that price difference, you get a panoramic sunroof and you get the hybrid system. I think what's more notable is not the price difference between this and the Yaris Cross V, but the price difference between this and the Corolla Cross Hybrid. The Yaris Cross Hybrid is only 80,000 pesos less expensive than the bigger, slightly more powerful, and TNGA based Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid. If you want a hybrid, Unless you really want a panoramic sunroof, I think the Corolla Cross Hybrid makes more sense.